Okay. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Jerry Zhao from Panasonic Automotive. Uh, today, on behalf of AGL Virtualization Expert Group, uh, I will introduce how AGL is approaching uh, the software-defined vehicle. Uh, actually, together with me, there was a co-speaker, uh, Hayden from AWS, leading the container and the mesh expert group. And unfortunately, he was uh, sick today and not able to join on-site, but he will be on online. And if you have any questions, uh, you can ask uh, uh, on the virtual platform. Um, I hope you have already joined the uh, uh, Dan Coach's uh, session in the morning. Uh, he mentioned about the cloud native has been a hot topic in the automotive world and AGL is uh, approaching uh, this software-defined vehicle for many years. So for this software-defined vehicle, it actually enables OEM and Tier 1 to develop uh, their software independent from the hardware. So you can develop the software and deploy it to any hardware uh, you would like to have. And uh, today, uh, I and uh, Regina Hayden will uh, jointly uh, give this uh, presentation about the software-defined vehicle, especially our work uh, in the Vert EG and the Container EG uh, regarding the Vertio, which is a common uh, device virtualization framework and also the container and uh, August, uh, container orchestration framework. So let me first uh, uh, go through about the virtualization expert group part, which we uh, focus on decoupling the software from the hardware with the standard uh, device virtualization fr framework word I.O. So let me first give a very brief introduction of uh, AGL Virtualization Expert Group. It was uh, started from 2017, and uh, so nowadays it is focusing on applying and extending Vertel for diverse automotive use cases for AGL. So first, let me uh, talk about some background of the uh, virtualization. So as, an, uh, as shown in this picture, it's actually an year of changes in the automotive industry uh, that cockpit is uh, uh, transforming towards uh, fully digitalized and a lot of uh, uh, devices and the displays are going to be, uh, be onboarded to the uh, future vehicles, which we call it cockpit or cabin. And this kind of uh, uh, distro, uh, sorry, and this kind of uh, uh, a lot of devices and display in the system and um, uh, boarded to the uh, future vehicles need a, a lot of easy use if the traditional architecture uh, is launched. However, that will be uh, costing a lot of uh, uh, money in the hardware, so and it will also increase uh, significantly for the software development. So a common way that uh, in the uh, in the automotive world is uh, using the virtualization solutions, like such as a hypervisor, uh, to combine a series of uh, domains on the same hardware. And virtualization is actually um, powerful in having different uh, uh, domains with different function safety and real-time uh, real requirements. Um, however, in the automotive computing architecture, there are uh, uh, two, uh, uh, two essential problems uh, regarding the uh, device virtualization, so which I explained here. So one is that uh, um, actually, uh, for, for different car models and car generations, uh, they may have a completely different uh, set of uh, devices. And even for, for, for same OEM, uh, for different car, they probably need uh, different uh, devices, different displays, uh, different models, which cause a, a big fragmentation in terms of the hardware point, uh, point of views. On the other hand, as I mentioned uh, in the previous uh, slides, uh, if the uh, 
uh, the currently uh, automotive world <coughs> using a lot of ECUs, maybe um, maybe 100 or, or, or more, which is a really high distributed architectures. And if you added more software functionality, uh, it will be a great conflict between the optimized allocation policies of applications and devices. You will be confused to uh, put uh, to, to put the uh, application to where. So this kind of issues will will, will cause the uh, the software dependent on the uh, the beneath hardware uh, architecture. So we even we thinking about the single system. Uh, the similar problems happens because even you uh, consolidate the uh, multi ECUs or multi hardwares into one single system, you still have a uh, multiple VMs, and for the application there, you still need to decide which VM it should be uh, allocated to, and which device to be uh, attached to the, which uh, VM. So this is the traditional uh, problems in the automotive world. Um, on the other hand, there is also a, a currently popular trend in the automotive world that, that uh, people would like to uh, first develop their software in the server or, uh, or cloud, so which is called the virtual ECU. So that means you uh, develop your automotive applications in, uh, in this kind of virtual environment. But that uh, actually also uh, relate to another issues that the currently cloud and server hardware are completely different with the uh, automotive edges, especially in terms of the peripheral devices. And even different uh, cloud have the, uh, their different uh, uh, hardware uh, architecture, which also uh, cause the fragmentation uh, across the multi-cloud. So there it will be an issue uh, when 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 having the hardware between multi clouds and even the, and also the the, the, the hardware different uh, fragmentation between cloud and the automotive edge. So with all the problems we um, summarized before, we to achieve this kind of software uh, defined vehicle, we need a common device virtualization framework to de completely decouple the software implementation from this diverse target across vehicle variants, generations, architectures, whether it's a single or multi issue, or what kind of hypervisor is using, and also this kind of development environment, real or virtual issue. And ideally, from the application point of view, what it will see is only a virtual devices that uh, uh, it can call to the same interface, no matter what kind of uh, hardware uh, structures it is uh, uh, under this virtual uh, devices. So with this background, uh, AGL is uh, continuously working on the VertIO, and uh, we have uh, already uh, developed this as a common device virtualization framework for the AGL. So this is the general uh, general picture of uh, what we are uh, doing in the AGL. So we um, using the word AO as a standard device virtualization to establish a complete healthy ecosystem for AGL to enhance the uh, inter uh, changeability and interoperability in various scenarios, including hypervisor environment, non-hypervisor environment, multi-ECU environment, and this cloud-native environment. So I will break down um, step by step. And first, I will give you a uh, introduction about what are the pains uh, around the virtualized AGL in the past. Uh, you know, in, in the past, uh, when there is a no common interfaces, uh, AGL has to adapt to every, every single incompatible interfaces provided by hypervisor and SOC vendors with their own solutions, uh, which is a great fragmentation, and uh, the AGL will have a great dependency on the specific virtualization solution because you cannot adapt every interfaces with the community uh, resources. 
and this will definitely uh, has been a barrier for the virtualization development in the AGL. So in order to solve that problem, we um, entered the standard virtualization framework, Virt.io, which was actually developed in 2008 as a hypervisor neutral wheel in the server or cloud world. And this has been very uh, successful in the, service, uh, in, the, in the server world uh, since the 2008, but uh, actually it is uh, all focused uh, uh, with the server-related peripheral, uh, peripheral devices like uh, uh, blog or NAT, this kind of things are common in the, um, uh, in, in the server world. Um, so by extending the word to the automotive use cases, especially um, uh, to adding the support of multiple uh, uh, vehicle related peripherals, which I will introduce in the, pre uh, in the later sessions, uh, we um, have successfully constructed this uh, common interfaces and implementation for the uh, parallel virtual devices, which uh, makes the, uh, the fragmentation to the limited uh, to, the, to, the, to the minimum, and uh, this kind of a common interface defined by Virtio largely improves the community uh, and encourages the, uh, the, the ready uh, BSB for the virtualization, and it enables a, a, a interoperability and healthy competition and efficiency uh, in the development of uh, AGL virtualization. So regarding the Word.io hypervisor, uh, Word.io work for the hypervisor environment, thanks to various uh, uh, contributing companies like Open Synergy, Linaro, uh, in the uh, in the WordDG, we have uh, successfully uh, supported the most of the uh, multimedia uh, devices necessary for the common AGL use cases. Um, and we, uh, so in 2021, we supported some basic uh, uh, and uh, devices for the uh, base use case and the and, uh, multimedia use case like IVI and uh, IC and the AGL has uh, successfully uh, launched this WordL framework as a standard device virtualization uh, framework in the 2021. And in 2022, we further enlarged some more advanced, these, uh, advanced multi uh, media features like camera, like video, like uh, this Bluetooth, and uh, so nowadays we can probably say uh, that the Wordel in the for the hypervisory environment actually already covered the most of use cases for the uh, existing AGL, and definitely we will completely uh, the uh, supporting more features make this. Uh, uh, were they all uh, able to support all the use cases of AGL. So after this great success in supporting Wordel in the hypervisor environment, we haven't uh, stopped our steps. Um, we actually imagined the world of Wordel to be used as a common uh, device virtualization framework, which can be uh, used as a, a well-defined device hell, uh, which can further reduce the fragmentation across socks and encourage the AGL-ready BSB able to portable to anywhere. Um, so we also uh, have to uh, have, uh, also extend this kind of uh, original uh, automotive edge virtual interface back to the, cl uh, the cloud server world <laughs> to enable a common interface between the cloud and edge so that you can have achieved a, a complete uh, environment parity between the uh, cloud and edge. Oh, sorry. So by doing all of this, we have maximized the uh, commonality, uh, commonality of the AGL software among socks, word or numbered or cloud or edge environment. And we, uh, this is our ultimate goal to have this kind of a device virtualization uh, across the uh, multi-levels. 
So regarding this work for the non-hypervisor environment, we have finished the design and implementation of a common uh, Verdell-based hell layer, which we call Verdell loopback, which is portable to execute on both native and virtual uh, environments. So this has been already verified with uh, block, uh, random generator, and input devices. And in particular, we uh, added the touch sensitivity sensitivity control features, which was uh, uh, cooperated with uh, IVIEG to uh, fulfilling their uh, product readiness uh, IVI features. So we are ready to start the next uh, step about the future support to the more uh, product related uh, AGL uh, activities from the IVIEG and ICEG. So regarding the architecture and the implementation details, uh, I will, I'm glad to uh, say that we have another session uh, just after this, uh, this session, so in the same room, uh, by Mikael from Virtual Open System. He will give uh, a deep dive uh, on this topic. So on the other hand, uh, we also uh, extend the uh, traditional WordL framework to a multi-EC or say multi-SOC architecture. Um, in particular, we are working with the display. So we uh, developed a, vir a unified virtual display uh, based on virtual GPU. And uh, this can be established to share integrity the control of multi-display on, on distributed uh, SOC system. So it has two um, features, which uh, first you um, mapping, you can mapping the multiple physical devices, uh, physical displays of the cockpit or, or smart cabin into a single large virtual display. So this is uh, from the physical world to mapping to a, a virtual world and all the application can just uh, uh, render their, their graphics uh, to the uh, arbitrary region of this, uh, un uh, this uh, big unified virtual <coughs> display, which enables the applications can be uh, rendered on any displays. So by, uh, so by doing this, uh, so Panasonic has uh, created this kind of framework to change the current situation that the displays uh, uh, is uh, uh, tightly bonded to the uh, display and the hardware. Uh, so the original legacy HMI system has the uh, significant strict restriction on this kind of relationship, which will uh, will cause the um, the harmful uh, impediment for the co uh, cockpit UX and for developers. You can uh, you don't have the flexibility to develop the UI UX and to put the contents uh, you desire to put on the correct place. And by uh, developing this unified HMI system we uh, can have a full flexibility on this ECU and the function display relationship for the cockpit UX innovation, which you can uh, just uh, uh, modify your, your uh, just adjust your, your applications to any displays you want. So before going to the, uh, introducing the technical details, I would like to uh, show you a video to illustrate this idea. introduce the demo environment. This is the configuration of the demo equipment. The window manager is integrated into this board. The window manager sends graphic rendering data to the ECU for an EV display as well as the ECU or tablet connected to the instrument cluster. In addition, images of the actual automotive interior and the HUD are rendered onto the screen of the desktop computer on the left. Now, let me demonstrate how multiple displays interact with one another using the window manager in this environment. First, I would like to show you how a HVAC app can extend over multiple displays, including EV, HUD, and instrument cluster. The HVAC application is integrated only into the window manager, but the information can be transferred from EV to the instrument cluster or displayed on HUD and a tablet. Even an ECU without the application is capable of displaying the information. Moreover, 
one display can be spanned across multiple screens to create one large display. I will show it by using this navigation application. The navigation app can present the information on one screen for EV or two screens using part of the instrument cluster display. As demonstrated, it is possible to stretch one display across multiple screens. In short, with the window manager, HMI applications can be managed cohesively to achieve flexible, seamless multi-display processing. Okay, thank you for watching this video, and uh, I think this illustrates the most of uh, important features of the unified HMI, and you can even see this is not a, a, a ECU, but it's a, a, a tablet or, or your phone. You can just uh, uh, have this uh, contents extended <laughs> to the automotive uh, related uh, issues. So let me uh, give a high level introduction about the unified HMI architecture. Uh, so basically we uh, extend this uh, uh, framework from the Wordel GPU originally on one sock. Uh, thanks to the Wordel uh, GPU, I mean the Wordel architecture of the front end and the back end, which you can imagine as the client and server, uh, we can easily actually uh, split those kind of uh, uh, two uh, front ends and back ends and to put it on to different uh, ECUs. So that means, uh, for example, for the application, you can just uh, keep the, the uh, front end on one sock and uh, keep the applications running on one sock, but uh, uh, rendering its uh, graphics on another ECUs by putting the Wordel GPU uh, back end on the other socks. Uh, definitely this, uh, uh, for, for this uh, framework, it's not necessary to having a hypervisor. Of, of course, you can have it. Uh, but uh, the general idea here is actually splitting uh, the, 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 the computing power, especially for the graphics, uh, from the uh, original main socks, which enables you uh, have a a, 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 a more a CPU computing centric uh, SORC architecture. On the other hand, uh, if you would like to have the GPU originally on this uh, main SOC, so it enables your uh, applications to be rendering on, on all the displays or all the uh, GPUs on all the, the, the SOCs. So you, you, you never need to worry about uh, which application should be attached to which uh, ECU or which VM because everything is uh, uh, mapped to this virtual uh, unified display and you can just uh, um, accommodate your, uh, your, your graphics uh, uh, rendering with your real use cases. And this can be very easily uh, to update it even you, uh, develop, uh, you, you deploy to your real products. So uh, we Panasonic have already open sourced this uh, uh, framework in the uh, GitHub. And if you are interested, you can have a look at it. And we will also uh, apply this unified HMI to the ADR USB uh, next year, uh, hopefully in OONPP. And we are going to have a, a full demo of this kind of unified HMI, even with the cloud native features, because for the UI UX design, uh, actually, with the, uh, the one I showed here, you can uh, maybe just uh, uh, to, to, to develop the, the graphics uh, UI, UX designs in the cloud or in the virtual uh, environment and then deploy the same thing uh, to the edge. So please, uh, we are welcome to, 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 to join our CES AGL booth to uh, dig more details about uh, unified HMI. As I mentioned a little bit of uh, cloud native, uh, actually we also are uh, working uh, to extend this word for the cloud native environment and we uh, continue uh, 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 collaborating with the container EV and uh, to make a, a reference environment of the cloud native AGL uh, by making the virtual and the container orchestration work on both cloud and edge 
uh, AGL instances and enable the developer to develop their uh, UI UX features on cloud environment. And you can def definitely uh, verify the graphic and the audio from your local uh, PC. Um, so before going to the cloud, actually our uh, EG groups also has a preliminary uh, implementation on the uh, MacBook. Uh, so they run the a AGL with Verdell on the top of uh, your MacBook with I Apple Mac OS 3 virtual identity framework. It is the directly without any changes, it's just the uh, AGL binary coming from the uh, AGL GitHub and you can just uh, run, run it uh, on the top of your Mac and this is all because of the uh, virtualization of uh, uh, Verdeo. And uh, so currently we have a, uh, already supported the most of the basic devices like block input and GPU and network. Uh, in both cloud and edge, they are uh, completely the same. And uh, for next years, we would like to uh, support more advanced devices like audio, video, uh, camera, and can. And uh, you can see from the uh, these diagrams, we uh, are using, we are collaborating with the container, e.g., uh, so that in the cloud we are using the AWS Graviton, which is an ARM-based server. So. Uh, in terms of ARM-based server, you do not need to have a, a additional emulation uh, from the X, uh, H6 to the uh, ARM-based architecture to running AGL or to, to running the uh, the Edge AGL. So otherwise, this will be a, a, a huge performance overhead. So using this Graviton, we put the KVM and Verdell there on the cloud and. Uh, uh, in the edge, we uh, use the hypervisor from our um, EG member Open Synergy Cocos hypervisor. So, so through this Wordel, we have the completely identi identical AGL binary. So, running on the AGL uh, AWS Graviton uh, cloud instance and also the AGL uh, reference hardware. So. Um, so for this AGL reference hardware now, it is uh, supporting Renaissance Org, but uh, definitely uh, next year, so uh, there will be a Qualcomm-based uh, SOC to be provided. And with Wordell, it uh, doesn't matter what kind of SOC uh, it's going to be used, and you will have a, a one AGL binary on cloud and deploy to any platforms uh, with any SOC. Um, originally, this part should be uh, 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 presented by Hayden, but as I, I mentioned, he is a little bit uh, uh, sick today, so I will present instead. So for the container and mesh EG, which is another expert group in AGL, so we uh, actually we are working closely together with this container EG and the virtualization EG because we think that's a a, a, both solutions are helping the AGL to shift to the software-defined vehicle. And uh, in this part, we would like to introduce a little bit uh, more about the cloud-native computing, which I, I mentioned in the VertiG part. Um, so here you can see actually uh, it uh, uh, illustrated a little bit more about uh, why the software defined vehicle or is needed uh, for the automotive world. So due to this connected autonomous shared and electrification which we call the case uh, trends in the automotive world. Um, so the, 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 the portion of the software values in the vehicle has been increased more and more and more. And now uh, by 2030, at least 50% of your vehicle value will be relying on the software. But looking at the current problems, so you will have a lot of headaches like safety features, quality, security, and varying harness cost, the integration test, and the VV models, which is very complicated and time consuming. You have regional uh, regulatory differences and the different hardware and software implementation. 
you have the supply chain fragility, which also may be um, impacted by some political or, or military reasons which uh, no one can control. And all this kind of issues actually is, is, a, is a depending on the hardware, so which actually blocks the, the, rev, uh, the revolution or the innovation of the software for the automotive. So this is the uh, reason why uh, the world is uh, the, the calling for a software-defined vehicle to decouple this kind of software from the hardware to solve this kind of uh, uh, hardware-related issues. So, what is the software-defined vehicle and how to make it possible? I, will, uh, I think there are uh, three points here. The first one, which I already explained in the virtualization expert group part, is to decouple your software from the hardware. So this is very important so that you can have the environment parity across uh, uh, different platforms, in cloud, in edge, in, in, in any SOX you would like to have. And the second one is that you would like to have your functions to be a very small block which we call it uh, a microservices, which is a portable uh, to, uh, to, 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 to develop the, on any platform, on any uh, SOC, and on, uh, on, on any uh, cloud platform, or on any uh, Linux or systems, or Android, or whatever, and those kind of uh, container-based microservices, which is able to uh, port uh, to different generation and uh, different vehicles. And last one, uh, definitely, so why this kind of uh, features are needed? Because you, you would like to have your vehicles to be updated after you, sell, you are selling the cars. You would like to have your, uh, your vehicle to produce the continuous values to the customers. So this is, the, is especially the OTA, which is uh, so you can update your your software over the air, over the air, con continuously and frequently. And uh, if you look at the uh, Tesla's uh, reports, you you will find that Tesla actually have a, a update every two day or, or even one day. Uh, that's really uh, something unbelievable in the traditional uh, OEM or or tier one uh, business model. So as mentioned in the previous slides, this uh, slide actually uh, um, furthermore uh, summarized, we need a hardware consolidation and virtualization, we need a in-vehicle microservices, and we need an application encaps uh, encapsulation. For all this, we are decoupling the software development from the hardware to enable a automotive DevOps to have the CICD uh, rapidly uh, to and reliably build and test and deploy your software, even with the mixed criticality uh, management of different uh, uh, automotive domain, uh, domains and uh, environment parity between the cloud and edge and even across different automotive edge. So with this kind of background, you can see actually the architecture of the automotive world has a, 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 a huge changes uh, in, the, in the recent years. So for the traditional architecture, which I also mentioned in the previous uh, uh, sections, you will have uh, hundreds of issues and uh, if you would like to have some inter-issue uh, features, you will have a thousands of weird uh, connections between ECUs, which will significant, significantly add the, 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 the weight and cost to your vehicle, which is uh, definitely something uh, not feasible. So most of OEMs has already uh, evolved their, their software to this kind of domain architecture. They, uh, they concentrate their uh, issues into several domains, and uh, uh, like the, this IVAC domain, ADAS AD domain, and powertrain domain to uh, to have a a, a, a a more centralized architecture to reduce the 
comple complexity of the hardware. And even more, uh, the, some uh, OEMs are also actually uh, is heading to this uh, zonal architectures, which has a more um, centralized architecture, which we call it high performance computer, which uh, I think is uh, very uh, familiar for the uh, cloud, uh, cloud uh, related uh, uh, engineers. And uh, this kind of high performance compute computer will uh, have the all the computer uh, resources are centralized in, in, in this uh, hardware, and uh, for all the other sensor or, or, or cameras, it will be connected to, to the zonal gateway. Uh, anyways, it will be like the brain of, the, uh, of your, your, your vehicle. So for cloud native computing, so this is uh, something I think most of people here is very uh, familiar here. Uh, for the uh, computer computing uh, foundation, they are standardized with Kubernetes and the container service mesh uh, technology. And inside AGL, actually, we are trying to bring in this technology uh, into the AGL to make this uh, uh, containers uh, solutions uh, uh, able to uh, make the AGLs more microserviced. And uh, as mentioned, this is uh, working closely with virtualization EEG, combining with the hypervisor solution to uh, provide the most uh, suitable architecture for the OEMs. And uh, we are now, uh, uh, for both EEG, we are uh, collaborating together to have the AGR running directly on the AWS Graviton uh, EC2. And uh, so in the future, we are expecting that uh, different VMs, uh, different containers can all develop on the, uh, on the cloud. And uh, you can use the Kubernetes to coordinate those uh, special uh, containers and VMs and deploy them uh, to the automotive edge. And th this all uh, will be uh, based on the container orchestration and also the virtual uh, standard device frame uh, virtualization framework, which uh, I mentioned in the, uh, the, the first half. So together with the two EG, we are, are trying to lead the AGL uh, to evolve to a more software-defined uh, styles of development and ar architecture. And we definitely hope if uh, anyone is interested, uh, just uh, join our expert group, uh, expert group co for the further discussion. And thank you. Uh, yeah. Are there any questions from the group? Um, yeah. uh, well, a very fiddly question, not very important, but can we return to your presentation from earlier? Um, pay, I think, slide 11. Wait a second. Slide 11. This one? Not that one, I think. I think where it showed, um, there was a number 11 down in the bottom corner. Oh. But that's, uh, can we go, ah, uh, this one. Oh, okay. This, sorry, okay, 13, sorry, my mistake. 13, okay, yeah. yeah um, so the VertIO mm -hmm. orange layer, now under multi ECU environment, you have just one VertIO crossing multiple socks. Um, can you explain why, why it's laid out like that? Okay, let me show you. I think exactly this architecture. You have a front end on one ECU, and you have the back end on, on, on the other ECU. Ah, okay, okay. So it's just one. So it maybe can have the multiple front end, mm -hmm. the multiple back end. So okay. But, uh, overall, it's, uh, we did the vertical framework across the different ECU. I'm with you now. Thank you very much.
Okay, regarding this uh, cloud native uh, demo, uh, we have a, a, a lively demo uh, in the AGL booth uh, in the in the sponsor uh, demo room. And if you are interested, please just uh, come here uh, to have a look. Oh, thank you.